Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at the structure of the xylem, formation of the xylem, adaptations of xylem to its function, and then we'll finish with a summary. So first of all, let's talk about the structure and the overall layout of these xylem vessels. So just to recap, xylem vessels are part of the vascular bundle found in the stems and the different tubes of the plant, which transport water and minerals. So if we just take a cross section of a stem here, we've got vascular bundles which line sort of the outer edge of the stem. And then on the inside of each of the vascular bundles, we've got vessels known as the xylem vessels. And collectively, they make a tissue called the xylem, which transports water up from the roots to the rest of the plant. And it transports both the water that's absorbed and minerals as well. So what the vessels actually are, if you think about vessels in terms of a tube, they're basically a load of dead cells which are stacked end to end to make this tube. So the crucial point here is that they're not living, they are dead cells that were once alive but are now not actually living or doing anything metabolic. These cells stack themselves end to end and then form this kind of tube-like structure that runs along the length of the plant. So you can sort of see in the diagram here that we've got one cell here and then you've got the next cell here, but they're just completely dead. They don't have any nucleus and they're not doing anything in particular. They just form a tube so that the water can pass through the tube quite freely. So the xylem cells, being dead, have very little inside them. They have no cytoplasm in their cells, so they have none of the gel-like liquid that's usually found within cells, and they don't have any organelles either, so there's no nucleus or mitochondria or anything like that. As well as this, the cell walls don't exist at the ends of the cells which are going through the tube. They only exist at the sides. So this is all to help the flow of water and makes the flow of water as fast as possible. So if we just look at the vessel here again, We've got one xylem cell here, for example. The cell wall exists only on the side, so it's kept the cell wall here to keep the sort of sturdiness of the tube, but here the cell wall has disappeared. So on the ends of the cells where the tube is going to be forming, the cell walls have disappeared. So as well as this, we don't see any organelles because if you imagine the cells, if they were full of mitochondria, cytoskeleton, and nuclei, this would all slow down the flow of water. And the point of these tubes is to get water from one area to another very quickly. Another important point to learn about these vessels is that they're lined around their edges with a waterproof coat of a molecule known as lignin. And lignin is known as a polysaccharide. So remember, polysaccharides are long chains of sugar units. And in this case, the example we're talking about is called lignin. So lignin itself lines the tubes on the outer edge. And you can see this spiral here inside the tube is representing this lignin. So it lines the tube continuously. And also here you can see it represented by these rings as well. So it's almost like it makes the tube a fully functional tube. And because of this, the water stays within the tube as it's transported through the tube, and it doesn't leak out of the cell walls or outside of the edges of the cells. So if we look at this electron micrograph again, we can identify the xylem vessels again. And again, as we mentioned, this is inside a vascular bundle. So this would be zoomed in from a stem cross section where we would have vascular bundles running around the edge of the stem. So this represents one of these vascular bundles. So what we have is the xylem tissue on the inside of the vascular bundles, where the phloem would be on the outside. So these large vessels here are the xylem vessels. They're much larger than the phloem vessels, and they tend to have thicker walls as well. So it's these that are the xylem vessels. So now that we've talked about the function of these xylem vessels, let's talk about how they're actually formed. So we've already mentioned that the xylem vessels are formed by cells which end up dying and losing all of their cytoplasm and organelles. So the first cells that start making the vessels are what we call the immature xylem vessels because they haven't matured yet into the correct vessels. So as they die, they start to lose their cytoplasm and organelles and then they get lined with the lignin. So if you think of it as a stepwise process, we have a living cell here, we've got the cell wall, we've got this vacuole in the middle, and we've got various organelles, for example, peroxisomes, the nucleus, chloroplasts, and everything inside the cytoplasm. Through time, what happens is the cell begins to die and the organelles become lost. So the cell begins to die and the organelles start to break down as different enzymes break away those organelles and break them down into basic products. As well as this, the cell wall at either end begins to degrade, but the cell wall at the sides remain. So remember the function of this is that at the two ends, the cell wall is now no longer present so that the water doesn't get impeded by the wall anymore. The water can just flow freely through the cell from one end to another. The cell wall remains at the side so that it gives it some structure and rigidity. Finally, after the cytoplasm and the organelles have all disappeared, this lignin is then deposited in the spiral or the ring-like fashion to make it more waterproof. 
So the polysaccharide, which is lignin, gives it the waterproofing feature and it just becomes deposited and it becomes deposited on the inside of the remaining cell walls. So you can see not only does it actually line the tube itself, but it lines the cell wall that remains in these cells which make up the xylem vessel. Lignification is the word that we use to describe this process of the deposition. So as the lignin is deposited on the cell wall and around the tube, this actually kills the cell and then forms this dead cell, which is what makes up the xylem vessels. This allows for the maximum transport of water or the maximum flow of water through these hollow tubes. So as well as the xylem being formed from dead cells, there are a few adaptations to the vessel that you need to be aware of as well. There are some holes that exist within the vessels which aren't lined with lignin. They have not undergone lignification and we call these the bordered pit. So going back to this diagram again, if we just familiarize ourselves, we've got these dead cells. We've got the cell wall that remains, which is internally lined with lignin and the lignin lines the walls and it lines the inside of the tube as well, again, making it waterproof. What you'll also notice is that as vessels come in contact with each other, so this vessel comes in contact with this vessel, you'll see these holes that exist between the vessels. And this is just to allow water to transport from one vessel to another. Because as you imagine, water is coming up from the roots and overall going up the plant. But obviously the plant isn't just one single straight tube. It has leaves branching off. It has different branches in different parts of the plant. The water needs to be able to branch off as if you would on a motorway. So these are the bordered pits which allow the water to make lateral movements and change the xylem vessel that they're in. So these are really important adaptations to the xylem. So as we just said, the bordered pits in the xylem are the holes that allow water to move between the vessels and change their direction. The other important feature of these vessels is that they're narrow enough to ensure that the water, when it's moving through them, travels upwards in an unbroken column. So what this means is that because the tube is narrow enough, the water, when it travels up from the roots through the tube, it travels in a continuous flow or a continuous column which doesn't have any gaps in it. If the tube, however, is made a lot wider, as in this scenario here, the water travels up the tube, but it travels in broken columns. It doesn't have the right amount of energy or stability to keep the same column. So here we would have a continuous stream of a flow of water, so the water can continuously flow up the plant. But in a wider tube, the water would travel in columns that are broken and that has gaps. We really don't want this because then you get gas bubbles and you get a lot of displaced gas in the plant, which isn't ideal. And as well as this, we've kind of touched on this point already, but there's no end cell walls in the dead cells of the xylem vessels, and there are no organelles or cytoplasm to impede the water flow. So the water can flow freely from one end to another very easily. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, Join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Revise smiley face, and together, let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.